implementing automation into your business to grow your freeze drying business can rapidly accelerate your growth and actually make you a more attractive business for future investment. I was fortunate enough to be here in Las Vegas and I got to visit with EIS Automation. So I'm gonna show with you one, just their facility, what they do. And I'm also going to include an interview that I had with one of their sales engineers to dive deeper into EIS and also just automation in general. I'm actually here with one of the sales engineers for a company here in Las Vegas that does automation. And I thought this was really applicable for me to come and visit. And we're gonna find out a little bit just more about what automation can do for your business and how it pertains to the freeze drying space. Sam, thanks for uh, thanks for having me here. Yeah, of course, hosting. anytime. <laughs> yeah, you called me out of thin air because you were with uh, over visiting a client of yours. Mm -hmm. And so you said, hey, why don't you stop by on your visit? So it was awesome to come here. So tell us a little bit about you specifically. Yeah and the company EIS. Yeah, so my name is Sam Levine. I'm a sales engineer here with EIS Automation. And um, you know, we really help companies um, kind of move from more manual processes all the way to uh, more automated type production system. Packaging, um, batching, palletizing. Um, we typically say after it gets out of the freeze dryer, um, that's, that's where we can help your process from a production standpoint. What's packaging look like? What what could what could Yeah, it so like? it you know it depends on um, the product that you're running, but you know oftentimes we'll see uh, customers do things on the bagging side, um, as well as you know we offer flow wrappers as well. So broadly speaking, you can get into the shrink wrapping side, um, but in order to do that, you need to do. Uh, more heat exposure and so it typically rules out the freeze drying side of things. How do I even approach a company like yours to even take a look at a company and is there companies that are too small? Who's your kind of target audience? So I would say um, you know when you're expanding your operations maybe you've hired a few people and um, you know you're struggling to keep up on the production side or you're running into quality issues. That's where you know typically it makes sense to reach out to a company like us. Typically, what that looks like is you come to us, you help us understand your existing operations, um, you know what you're doing, what you'd like to improve, etc. And then we keep abreast of the latest automation technology out there, and so we'll typically have a longer conversation um, to understand kind of your broader goals as well as you know what the production process looks like will help provide a, essentially a turnkey solution so you know whether that's on the palletizing side packaging boxing labeling you name it um, you know we can we can really help you move towards that automation side of things one you you know lower your unit cost of production two you've got a much more repeatable process so from a quality side of things um, you've got a lot more uh, uh, control of what everything looks like at the end. You know, oftentimes customers are considering ramping up their own production or you know going to a co-manufacturer, and we can kind of help you um, you know understand some of the uh, uh, pros and cons of both approaches. You know, we have systems all over the world, fairly location agnostic as far as you know where where the solutions go to. Typically, part of that conversation around the production side of things is. You know, do you have a limited footprint? Are you planning on increasing production or moving to a new facility? Um, here are some of the pros and cons, differences in technology types that we could use uh, depending on your future plans. We often will discuss with our internal engineering team and start getting some ideas of, of what makes the most sense from a production standpoint based on your operations and goals and what have you. When you're moving more towards hiring people in order to keep up with production, you know that's typically where we've seen it make sense from an ROI standpoint to start looking at automation in order to help drive a lot of the unit costs down. The other thing I would say is probably from more of a quality standpoint, um, you know, if you see that you're getting customer complaints, things aren't being bagged properly, packaged properly, um, you know, there's missing counts, 
things like that. That's where having a you know repeatable automated process can often help out. Our specialty is kind of you know once the product's been freeze dried, getting it into bags, applying labels, putting that into secondary packaging. Um, sealing, palletizing, all of the technology that goes into those processes, um, you know, that's where we've typically helped people um, automate things. Most of the things that we do are oftentimes um, uh, you know, custom automation solutions. Every, every customer's operation is different. And so you know, that's, why, um, uh, that's why we kind of like to lead with the custom automation side of things. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the interview just as much as I have. If this topic about automation is interesting you at all, I want to invite you to a special series that I'm going to have in the upcoming months with Sam at EIS Automation. Now this series is going to be focused on various different topics about automation in general and I'm going to offer it completely free and I'm going to live stream it either on this channel or I'm going to offer it as a special invite only to a Zoom call where you're going to have a special invitation to attend that session. We're going to talk about different topics and then we're going to open it up for Q&A for you to directly talk to EIS automation and the experts about how automation could benefit your business. If you're interested in this type of series and you want to have a personal, intimate type of live stream with experts about automation, go to the video description of this video right now. You'll see a link that goes directly to freezedrybusiness.com. That's the website associated with this channel, and it's going to take you to a form that you're going to fill out your email and your name and that way I can then notify you when this series comes out and you'll be the first to know. So again, go to the video description right now, fill out the lead form at freezedrybusiness.com and you'll be notified in the future of when this series comes out. Sure. So how long do you talk to someone to figure out what they actually need and are looking for mm -hmm. and then what do you actually do to execute that? We're happy to have we're happy to have conversations um, with you know different freeze dryers um you know that's that's you know completely uh, uh complimentary you know typically from there uh we'll really hone down on what the operation looks like what the goals are what sort of roi targets you guys have the next step would typically be us putting together a proposal where we outline exactly the hardware the operational steps um you know the deliverables etc for um, for this project, depending on the complexity, four to six months uh, before we'd actually have a system on site ready to be up and running. Our approach is very much, you know, we're not just going to Home Depot and building the birdhouse. Um, we're actually designing this thing from the ground up. We're meeting with you guys every other week um, to make sure that the design, integration, testing, all of that's on track. Only once we've got a solution that we know has been completely vetted, tested, et cetera, um, is when we would want to ship it out. The website's uh, eisautomation.com. Um, my email, um, I'm sure we can include in the description, but it's sam.levine at eisautomation.com. And then um, we'll include my phone number there as well. Um, basically, you'd reach out to me. We'd have that initial conversation, and then, um, uh, and then, you know, see what kind of makes sense from an automation standpoint. Mm -hmm.